Wide angle and manual lenses, what are they good for? In situations that you're not time sensitive, sharpness is important and you want to show wide open spaces, which is exactly why I use this lens as my workhorse when it comes to landscapes. Hello and welcome to Triple Tech. And in this video, I'm gonna show you why this thing is the perfect lens for landscapes. This lens right here is the Samyang 16mm f2.0 manual lens. Samyang have been known for their amazing sharpness in their lenses along with their amazing price tag. But for such a good price, there must be some shortcomings. I'm going to get the cons out of the way as soon as possible because I want to focus on the pros. This is a really good lens, but you've really got to look at the pros. But first, let's just quickly look at some of the cons. First of all, as you probably know, this lens is completely manual. Now, if you buy this lens for the type of use I described earlier, this won't be a problem at all. But if you think you're going to be doing any kind of sports photography or vlogging, you're really gonna struggle without any autofocus features. Remember, this also includes a manual clicky aperture. So changing aperture smoothly on video will not happen. That's why Samyang sell video versions of these lenses with declicked aperture rings and gears and whatnot. Now this next one isn't really an issue in many of my pictures, but I have noticed a fair bit of purple and green fringing on brightly lit photos. I haven't been through the experiments to determine the exact type of lighting that causes it, but it's nothing Lightroom cannot handle. One thing I have noticed about this lens on my 700D is that the infinite focus mark is slightly off and therefore can't really be trusted. This probably has something to do with the fact that it, it is a crop censored camera, because on my C100 Mark II, this isn't a problem at all. I have heard reports like this from other users with similar experiences with the focus ring, but it's really not a deal breaker. And once you know where the actual focus is, you can give it a mark if you like, or just remember it in memory where actual infinite focus is. There are mixed reviews about distortion on this lens, but really in the type of picture that I'm taking in wide open landscapes, distortion really isn't an issue. I haven't gone through any scientific tests on this lens, but really the distortion is absolutely fine. If there is any kind of distortion, it doesn't affect my images much at all. The lens is very, very sharp in the middle, as you'd expect. However, it does suffer a little bit of sharpness roll off towards the edges, but that's to be expected on such a cheap lens. This is still amazing and nothing to be complained about at this price point. Now, before I talk about all the amazing things about this lens, I'm just gonna quickly give you a little tour of the lens. First of all, this lens comes with a lens hood. This lens hood attaches in the same way as many other lens hoods do. It's just a click and turn, very, very simple. And nothing wrong with that at all. It's perfectly secure, it doesn't pump, come off very easily. No complaints there. The focus wheel has a nice rubber texture to it and is very smooth. And towards the back, you have the aperture change wheel. This is a clicky aperture wheel. This is a photography lens, really, so you're not gonna have to struggle with this with video. However, it is perfectly still very good for video, and I still do use it for video. But as I said earlier, they do sell video-orientated versions of these, of these lenses. So if you really need that declicked aperture wheel, you can buy that lens and you'll be absolutely set. And also, this lens comes with various mounts for different cameras and different mount types but I have the Canon version as I am a Canon fanboy, I admit it. Okay, so now let's talk about all the amazing things about this lens. I did talk about earlier about the focus wheel, very, very smooth and absolutely amazing. Some very cheap lenses like this are not very cheap, but still pretty cheap for the quality of the lens. They don't have particularly good focus wheels, but this is absolutely perfect. And there's actually quite a lot of throw on it for a photography lens. Now I know this doesn't affect the image in whatsoever, but it does make it look quite professional when you have a red ring around the outside of the lens does help when people look at it and they always think it's more of a professional lens if you have a red ring on it. Now you have some amazing markings on this lens. As I said earlier, the focus, the infinite focus marking isn't exactly accurate, but for all the other markings, they're pretty accurate and they're very, very useful. The aperture setting is easily identifiable and everything there is easy to read. Now you would have seen me throw in a few pictures throughout the video of some of the amazing pictures that I have taken throughout the last two or three years that I have owned this lens. Now this lens is the first prime lens that I ever owned and I must admit this is probably the best purchase and the best lens I still own. I, have, I haven't bought many lenses, I do admit that, but I don't really need much more. As I said, this is my workhorse lens for landscape photography. And really, 
it's all I need. I just need a, a good solid wide angle lens. I don't need really, really fast, something with really fast autofocus or anything like that. I'm not doing sports photography. This is when you can plonk the camera down on a tripod on the top of a mountain and you've got a few minutes to take some amazing pictures. You don't need to rush these pictures at all when you're doing landscapes. And that's why for photography beginners, I'm going to say this is the perfect lens for landscapes. So that was my overview of the 16mm Samyang f2.0 lens. I hope you enjoyed the video. Any questions you have about the lens, about my experience with it, or maybe you can talk about all your experiences with the lens below in the comment section. Have a nice creative discussion as usual. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. As I said, any questions down below, like the video and subscribe. That's a real big help. And I'll see you in the next video.